presentation will run more or less for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes max. And then we'll go through questions and answers, and I'll try and demonstrate some of the things that Mendeley can do in real time as your questions pop in. Uh, I myself am an engineer by, tra by training. Um, in fact, I'm a bioengineer, so a little different from some of you, but I'm currently doing a PhD in bioinformatics, so I have, a, I have some of the computer science part uh, coming into my training now. So I'll talk a little bit more about that further, further down in the presentation. And uh, keep in mind, you have a questions and answers box, so whenever you do have a question, uh, please put it in there and then when, when we finish the presentation, I'll go get around to answering them. If you do have any pending issues right now, such as no sound or no, uh, no uh, image or something, uh, just try and use the chat box. I, I can sort of just peek there and see if something's wrong. So, um, so the, the, this presentation will go over these brief topics. So I'm just gonna explain what Mendeley is. I'll, I'll explain how you can organize your documents and all your references, collaborate and join groups, create groups and working groups together, and then also uh, see all the, the cool statistics and trends that we can ex that Mendeley is actually extracting from all of this through our um, through the basically the aggregate information that everyone's uh, uh, generating through using Mendeley. And then finally, I'll show you how you can sort of extend Mendeley in your by, by yourself if you're into programming and uh, uh, using some, something that we have, which is the, our, basically our open API that gives you access to <clears throat> all the information that we have stored in our database. So um, let's get this started. So for any of you that have no idea what Mendeley is, or even of those that you already know what it is, um, that might... Uh, make you learn some of the couple of new things. So Mendeley is available on, um, there's a desktop uh, application, a web uh, component, and then we have mobile applications. So it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux for, for all the desktop uh, um, operating systems, or at least the most modern ones, or most used. And then it's available online through any web browser. We don't necessarily recommend too much the, the um, Internet Explorer, but the latest one does. Uh, we do try to um, make it compatible with all of them. So um, these, these, although they're separate things, they all work together in a very meshed and inter interconnected way. And I'll show you that whatever you do on your Mendeley desktop, desktop gets synchronized to your Mendeley web and vice versa. So it becomes uh, super useful. And when you're using your mobile devices, you can always have access to your library, your papers and read and so forth. So, um, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's written here, it's free. So you can easily go download it, give it a try. And if you like it, just keep on using it, and I'm sure it'll help you because it has helped me in my research. So Mendeley as a company uh, it has two offices, one in London and one in New York. Uh, London offices, is, it has the majority of the developers, and um, we're roughly over about 40 uh, uh, people working at Mendeley from various uh, higher ed, uh, education institutes, such as many of these that are here posted on this um, PowerPoint slide. Um, we have some back, uh, the, initially um, we have some backing from uh, some of the co-founders of quite known companies such as Skype and Warner Music and Last.fm. Uh, Last.fm is in particular very similar as uh, initially the idea of Mendeley sort of spawned from something very similar to Last.fm. Uh, and um, <clears throat> we're also uh, working on a few um, grants in the European Union where we're trying to work with some of the universities to help them uh, develop a way to uh, interlink Mendeley with the um, institutional repositories. So um, organizing documents, for any of you that uh, don't, uh, have, have never tried Mendeley, I'm just going to go over some of the ways you can add papers into Mendeley. So obviously it's a reference management tool and you want to have an easy way to add all your documents into it so you can start reading them and organizing and, and then eventually cite it, uh, citing them in your, um, in your work. So there's various ways, there's actually about more or less seven ways to add papers into Mendeley or references. Um, the easiest, most intuitive way would be drag and drop. You can drag a file or a whole folder of papers directly into the application. You just pick them up from your desktop, drag and drop, and let them go in the middle, and the program will automatically read through all of the documents and extract, auto-extract all the meta information, all the metadata that's within the paper such as the title, the abstract, the authors, the, et cetera, the publisher, the page numbers, and all that. Um, in the advent that it, does, it, that it can't do that, if the paper is either not a very old paper or, or from a, a very particular journal or it's published in some weird way, the, the actual PDF is strange, um, it does attempt to find as much information as it can 
and if it doesn't find all the information, it will label it as uh, needing some type of a review. And I'll show you that you can actually uh, fill in this information quite easily with a couple of the tools that we that the program has. So when it's not done automatically, you you may only need one or two steps to actually fill in all the rest of the information without having to manually go in and fill in all the different fields. So uh, you can see here that uh, Mendeley desktop, the application, is basically divided into three uh, separate uh, sections. So we have a, um, a left-hand a, a left -hand side of the panel, that, which is actually divided in two. And the center one, uh, which basically lists all the papers that, you're pick, that you've picked on the left-hand side. And then on the right, the far right-hand side, is basically the details for the papers that, or references that you've selected in the middle. So there is some sort of a hierarchy from left to right. So whatever you pick on the left shows in the middle, and whatever you pick in the middle shows in the right. Um, Top left hand right left hand side you'll see that there's folders and you can create subfolders and there's some um, preset um, groupings here such as uh, all your documents and recently added ones favorites and so forth so I will, I will explain that a little bit more um, toward on the bottom you have some filters that allow you to say you look at a, 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 a big folder here and you have um, many papers inside you may want to just sort of dwindle them down to a specific author or a journal or something and so there are filters here uh, such as keywords and, and tags that you actually can create yourself. So as I said there's many ways to add papers so the most elementary way is to add a paper by dragging and drop it into Mendeley. Another, uh, another really simple way to do it is just uh, by clicking on the file menu you go add. I'm just going to check something here quickly. Um, to just, I'm just gonna help someone tune in. Oh, sorry. Okay. Anyway, uh, let me just go back there quickly. So, I, as I said, there's various ways to. Um, oh, pardon me. Various ways to add documents into the. the to the application. So you can uh, drag and drop, you can add a file by just going to the file menu, selecting add files, you can pick one or many, or a folder, you can add a full folder. We have a cool feature which is called the watch folder, which is basically a folder that you designate on your computer, you can be more than one, that um, Mendeley, the program, actually keeps an eye on. So that's, that's what, what we generally do, and a lot of people actually do, is they have a single folder where they just keep on adding, piling in PDFs that they get. And it, it, at some point, it reaches a point where there's just so many files in there, you're not really sure um, which ones are, are new, which ones are not. You can check by the date, but sometimes the dates are not necessarily correct. So this watch folder basically just keeps an eye on, on any folder that you want. And whenever you open Mendeley, if there is a new file in that folder, it'll uh, update it, it'll in, in, import it into your library, extract all the information, and do that all for you by, by itself. So you don't have to actually come in here or drag and drop it every time. Just keep it in that folder. Whenever you open Mendeley, or if it is open already, it's always watching that folder. It'll automatically import the, the, the data into into your uh, library. Um, other, obviously, another way to add data in is using um, it, is using a database from another software that you may be, have been using. So we allow you to, if you use EndNote or some other software such as um, uh, RefWorks or, or or some other reference management software. You, if you can export into uh, a standard format such as BibTeX or RIS uh, or um, EndNote XML, you, uh, Mendeley is, is capable of reading those those documents. So you can you can easily import from another uh, program uh, quite easily. Um, so there's one end way to enter uh, data as well in the, into your library, which is not really nice, which is the manual entry. So in, in last circumstances, there's no way to actually get this paper in or if it's a specific type of document that's not not playing well with Mendeley, you can actually just create an, a manual entry, fill in the fields by hand, and then a attach a document to it. <clears throat> Very rarely you'll, you'll probably have to do this unless you're working with really strange or old documents. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. So as I said, uh, just briefly explain, you can create a watch folder, which basically whenever you put a PDF into that folder, Mendeley automatically extracts it and keeps an eye on that folder. So you, you can, generally I set up a folder on my computer somewhere, I add papers into it, and whenever I open Mendeley, even if it's already open, it just imports it all automatically, sorts it up, and all you have to do is then put it in the right folder within Mendeley if you want to.
as I said, um, regarding the, 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 the metadata extraction. So when documents are imported into Mendeley, Mendeley tries to do its jo a good job in trying to sort out all that information. So Mendeley actually indexes the full text of your PDFs. And this is going to be super useful because it, there, there, there will be a point where you want to search across all your papers. And instead of just searching through a title or through the abstract, you can actually look up papers through the full text of those papers, which becomes really useful in many, in, in, at many occasions. So uh, when you add up a PDF and if it's difficult to read uh, if it's a, uh, or if it's a, a scanned paper for some reason, and older, older documents sometimes are scanned and they're not really a full text, Mendeley has a little trouble trying to read them. Uh, so um, what it does is sometimes it'll fill in some of the information, but it won't fill it all in. And if by any chance you can ha you can get the DOI so or the PubMed ID or the ArchiveX uh, ID, you can just fill it in one of these fields that we have in the, on the right-hand panel and press on the little magnifying glass. And what Mendeley will do is it'll go and search for the document online on one of those databases, those meta databases, and just fill in all the information for you in one go. So it automatically fills that in. Uh, another way to do it is Mendeley will ask you if you want to search that paper by its title alone. So say you don't even have access to that ID, you can do a search by a title alone and look it up on Google Scholar. And if it does find it, it'll, it'll fill in all the information uh, from there. If it's, only, if it's only able to find the PubMed ID, then it'll just try and keep on going and finding it subsequently. So it does a, it does a really good job of trying to uh, uh, keep your library as complete as possible so that you don't have to go in and edit things um, manually. And then finally, the, the last way, uh, one of the last ways to add papers into your library is when you are doing, uh, is through your browser. So instead of, say you don't have the papers on your computer, you're just doing a literature, a literature review or something and you're going online and you're doing searches. Uh, Mendeley has a, a bookmarklet for your browser that you can drag and drop into your browser um, bookmark bar. And basically whenever you're visiting any of these many sites that we have listed here, there's a bunch of supported sites. So the, the, most of them, the, the known ones like Google Scholar and ArchiveX, and, and a lot of these databases now have actually a little Mendeley button on them. So you just have to like click that button and it does it by itself. But uh, if you are on any of those sites or if they support the, the, what, what we call coins, you can easily import um, that reference into your library just by clicking on, the, on, the, on this uh, plugin. So how it works is in here you can see this example where uh, someone did a, performed a search for protein folding on PubMed and a bunch of results came up on the left on, at the back you can see here and when they clicked on import to Mendeley what happened is a pop-up window will show up and the same results that were there on that list will show up in that pop-up and then all you have to do is click on import. The cool thing here is if by any chance your network or if the, pa the paper is available for that uh, freely available through your network connection to uh, download a little icon here with a PDF will show up and by importing that reference not only the reference is imported, but the PDF itself as well. So what it does here is when I'm saying import, what it's doing is it's keeping a copy of that reference in your Mendeley library, but in Mendeley web. As I told you, Mendeley desktop and web are basically the same thing, but they're just one's online and one's on your computer. So well then once that, is, once that is imported to your Mendeley web account, you can just synchronize within your desktop application and you get all the documents on your computer. So that's what, it's rep what, what you're seeing here on the slide. So there's a button within Mendeley Desktop to synchronize your library. And when you press the sync button, what happens is uh, the doc whatever's uh, been added either to your desktop or to your Mendeley web gets synchronized between each other. So either it's go from your desktop to the web or web to the desktop. What this means is that you can have Mendeley Desktop installed on multiple computers. Say you have it at work and you have it in the lab or in the lab and then and at home or in your laptop and your desktop computer at home or, or whatever, so on various computers. And it can be one in Windows, one in Linux, et cetera. Um, if this is all nicely and synchronized, what, me, what this means is that you can have all your papers all, of, all the time with you any, anywhere you go, even on your iPhone or your iPad if you have the application installed there too. So um, it becomes super useful in the sense that uh, you have access to everything everywhere. So what would you added all these documents, you have to probably organize them because if you're like me, you probably have a couple hundred documents and uh, sometimes people have in a thousand. So um, we do offer various ways to create folders. So you can create folders and subfolders. 
uh, one reference can be in multiple folders without actually creating multiple um, documents. If you know what uh, the labels in Google work like, it's sort of like that. So you're basically creating a folder. You can have, say you have a folder for protein and for um, chemistry. You could have that same paper in both categories, but you only have actually one copy of that paper. Um, another way to keep things organized is whenever you start a document, if you like it as a favorite, it becomes sort of stored in the favorite section here. Papers that are just recently uh, inter uh, uploaded to Mendeley or introduced, uh, added to your library or in the recently added. There is a, a section here for needs review, which I explained earlier. If there's a paper that the program thinks that all the data is not properly filled in, the, it'll, it'll group them in there so that you can go and take a look. There's a folder called My Publications, which I will show you later on. What it means is papers that you've published and you have authorization to actually uh, share with other people online to republish, you can uh, put them in this folder and they'll become available for download on your researcher profile. So your profile on Mendeley Web, you'll have a profile there and th those papers will be basically, you'll have a, a bibliography of your own listed there and the, those documents will be downloadable if you if you add them there. If the PDF is available, if you just add references, just those references will, will, will be listed in your in your profile. So it's a, it's a pretty cool way to set up a a sort of like a researcher's CV page of yourself. Um, as you can see here in this image, I'm um, not sure if it's really, if you can actually see it, but you don't, not every reference has only PDF, so you can actually attach other types of documents to your references, so uh, Word documents, PowerPoints, PDFs, etc. And you can have multiple documents on the for the same reference. So in some cases you have the PDF and you also have the supplementary data, so zip files, Excel files, etc. So you can add them all in there. Obviously, if you just add a, um, an Excel file um, to the program, it probably won't. It, it, it won't really do a good job, if, if any job at all, to try and extract any of the metadata from it. So obviously, it works works the best with PDFs. But then you can obviously attach documents to it after that. Um, so I've showed you how to put in folders, how to organize into the subfolders and put stars and all that. There's other things you have to obviously understand is, <clears throat> is that when you're looking for all these papers, you have two, three, four, five hundred papers in, in your library. It's sometimes not a little hard to find them. So um, what we provided here in the program is there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either use filters on the bottom left-hand corner, and that will sort of like dwindle down the number of results in the middle. And you can also use a search box. We have a search box in the top right-hand corner of Mendeley that allows you to search across um, all your papers if you select all documents, or you can select a specific folder, and it'll only search within that folder. So it's context-based. And when I mention context-based, I'll show you in a, in, in a couple of seconds that it'll also only it'll allow you to search within one paper alone. And that's because Mendeley comes with a built-in PDF viewer. <clears throat> so the search box allows you to search free text uh, you can just search whatever you want. As you search, obviously, it'll try and pick up whatever it can find. And it ranks the papers accordingly to say, a higher ranking will be, be given to papers that are found uh, with that word in their title. And then in the, the, um, in the tags will also have a high ranking. And then obviously the abstract will be a little lower. And then the full text will be a little lower down. So um, there is some uh, type of a ranking system going on here when you do a search. So they're not just showing up by randomly. And you can also search specific fields. So you can look up just the author or just the title or just the, the year, et cetera. So there are some, and the notes. And I'll show you what the notes are because, as I said, Mendeley Desktop comes with a built-in PDF viewer. So here what you're seeing is that per, that same word was being searched here, protein, in the same search uh, field in the top right-hand corner. But when you double-click a paper, so in, in our library, if you double-click any of the entries and the PDF is available, a, second, a tab will open, and you can have multiple tabs open at the same time to read multiple documents. And Mendeley will remember where you were when you closed Mendeley, so when you open it again, it'll know where you were on that PDF the last time, which is pretty useful and cool. Um, so it's the same field now, when you do a search in that same field, it's actually searching only within that PDF, and then you'll, it'll let you rotate through the different occurrences of that word within the PDF. So you can see here the top, the top bar of Mendeley changes, and some different tools show up. So this, what you're looking here is, uh, what you can see here is the Mendeley desktop for Mac. So the buttons are maybe a little bit different on Windows. 
And you see here, you can have a highlighting tool, so you can highlight text and add post-it notes and select text and so forth. And you can read in full screen, which is really cool. So if you, don't, if you have no distractions, etc. Here you see some of the tools in action. So you can add post-it notes. You can highlight text. So and you have you have so you have general notes that are notes that are document-wide, and then you have localized annotations. So these, these post-it little bubbles, whenever wherever you place them, they get a little post-it note, and you can write whatever you want in there. So uh, it's quite useful. And I'll show you that. When you start working in groups with the Mendeley, you can actually add um, multiple people can be working on the same document, adding their own highlights, each of them, and, and adding post-it notes all at the same time. So it becomes super cool. And one one other thing that when you add a lot of papers to your computer and to your desk to your applications is that the files that you download and you add to Mendeley and to your computer, obviously, are in many cases unreadable. What I mean by unreadable is that the file name is sometimes sdarticle.pdf or a number.pdf, and you have no idea what's inside them. So Mendeley comes with built in within the, in their preferences or in the options. You can go in and look at uh, something that we call the Mendeley file organizer. And we have a couple of options here. You can organize by folders or by uh, author, by journal. These little bubbles, you just drag and drop them, and it'll show you what it'll look like, the structure that'll end up. So when what happens is you get Say you start off with a folder or something like this, where you have a bunch of papers that are sort of cryptic in their name. You have no idea what's in there. Sometimes they just have like a very vague name or very similar names, although they're different papers. Um, what you do is you run the file organizer, and the file organizer uses all the metadata that is extracted from these papers that's in your library, and it renames them to an appropriate um, structure that you've picked. So in my case, I decided to keep them all in one folder, but I wanted all the files to be named the author, the year, and the title. You could, if you wanted to, you could order all of this into uh, a folder structure. So you could keep all the author papers, uh, each author has its own folder, or each journal has its own folder, or each year has its own folder, so forth. So, uh, it, it, and it does it automatically, so you can redo it if you want to at any stage, uh, which is quite useful. So we've added all the papers into Mendeley. We've started managing them, putting all the documents into um, into folders, and keeping. We we now know how to find everything. Now it's time to obviously do the hard work, which is doing reading all of them and then writing about your research. So when you write about well, when you're writing your documents, you obviously either use a word processor such as, such as Word, or uh, Open Office, uh, uh, or Neo Office, or or Libre Office, etc. So. <clears throat> Mendeley comes with a built-in uh, word processing plugin that allows you, basically, it's a citation tool plug, uh, that allows you to add citations as you write your documents. And uh, it's currently available for on Windows for Microsoft Office. Let me see. So Windows is 2003, 2007, and 2010, I think. And then on Mac, it's 2008 and 2011. I presume I, I, I know the numbers change vary a little bit, and on wind on all systems, open office uh, is, any of the current versions it, it's generally supported. Just one one thing to mention: we currently don't support, and uh, very few people ask, but they, they do ask from time to time. We don't we don't support at the moment the 64-bit version of uh, MS Office, so um, so you won't be able to use the plugin for that application. What the plugin is here, you can see here, is um, someone's using a, writing a paper in uh, Office on Mac. When they're ready to insert a citation, there's a little button in one of the menus. On, on Windows and on uh, Linux, you'll see the button show up in one of the ribbons within in the processor, so it's a little easier to find. In Mac, it's actually a little stored within a little submenu. So you go into the submenu, you find Insert Citation. A pop-up box shows up with the search field. And you can directly within Word search for the author or the title of the paper, and it'll look it up. It'll show you the paper that's available, and you just click OK. You can do multiple at the same time, and it adds a citation. And once you're done, you can go click bibliography, and the, a bibliography is generated for you, and you get the, the full um, <coughs> bibliography of all the papers that you've cited. And you can then change the select the the style that you want the that those citations and those references to be listed at the end um, to, to your liking. So there's currently about 
I, th I think it's 10 different styles built into Mendeley, um, but we have over a thousand that are available, and there's a little button you just you just you can just easily install them. You can browse them all, and then just install them whenever you want. So. Uh, if there is any issue with the citation style, we currently don't have a citation style editor that allows you to customize that uh, those styles. But we but we we are in the process of, of trying to make one for you or at least finish one. And um, but we have uh, provided on our blog some instructions on how to actually edit citations if you do need to. But um, currently, there's actually a very very large list of available styles. And unless you're something from working some a specific country or, or at a specific institute that requires something very different, um, you should be able to find something that uh, is to your liking. Another thing I just wanted to mention, you can always, within Mendeley Desktop, select a couple of papers in your list, do cop control uh, or command C, so copy, and then paste into any text editor, and it'll copy and paste that, that citation in a, in a formatted way. So it's really useful for just say you want to email somebody a, a reference to a paper or just post it on a on a web blog or something like that. You can it's pretty easy to do that. So for those that don't use pro word processors per se and use something like LaTeX, um, it might be quite useful to um, have a book tag of all your documents or at least of a selection of your documents. So what we do here is <clears throat> within the Mend uh, Mendeley preferences, you can go to a section, one of the tabs at the top. You can find one. It's close to the file organizer, you can find one called BibTeX. So uh, you can escape some of the LaTeX special characters that in there um, because sometimes abstracts and all that have those, those, those characters that may screw up your LaTeX. And then you can basically just create um, BibTeX files that are automatically synchronized with your library. So say you're starting a new paper, you, cre you can create a, a folder, which we call, in this case, it's called a collection. You can create a folder or it's a collection of papers that's for that for that project, and you can create you can have the program create a whole collection uh, a book text file for that collection. So as you write documents and you add papers into that folder, the the book text file is keeping all of them there. And then you can obviously uh, work on by um, adding or uh, um, using that file for your LaTeX document. So when you do create this, what happens is you get a folder. In this case, I created one for every folder in my library. You get a bib file for every uh, folder. And this is just basically what a bib tag looks like. It's basically LaTeX with specific fields. That, uh, their, their fields are a little, um, are quite easy to understand. Um, they, they do allow some specific uh, fields that um, <coughs> we try to keep as standard as possible. Um, still related to BibTeX, I said that Mendeley easily imports to BibTeX, and as you can see, it easily exports to the, to the same format. So it, um, it does a, a pretty good job with that. So if you do work in LaTeX, um, we do know there are some issues with this. There, LaTeX, some some journals have specific, in some fields of research, have some specific fields that they add to their BibTeX. Uh, we don't necessarily have all of them, um, but we do try and keep most of the standard fields that in here, and um, and we always like to hear from whoever is working in LaTeX because this is something that not many people do use, but it, it, we do feel it is useful. And folks in, in engineering and uh, mathematics, computer science, and physics generally uh, do like to, to use LaTeX uh, for, for, their, for their projects. I'm just going to go try and run through the collaboration part quickly because we're I'm sort of extending and going a little over time here because we started a little late. But um, so I'm going to demonstrate one of the really cool features here that Mendeley has is allows you to work in groups. And groups is super cool because there are uh, private groups and public groups, and I'll show you that they allow you for, to do different things. So when you create a, uh, um, a Mendeley account, you um, when you sign up for Mendeley, you basically get created uh, automatically a Mendeley web account. So there's basically your user profile. And this profile, you can upload a photo and fill in some of your information, and this becomes useful because you can then share your publications through the My Publications folder within Mendeley Desktop that I mentioned to you. Those files become available for download in many cases if they are actual PDFs. Sometimes they're just references. And this is Dr. Victor Henning. He's uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Mendeley. And you can see that when you do provide this information and people within Mendeley read your papers or download them and have access to them, you get quasi real-time statistics about what, uh, who's reading your papers and 
and uh, how many people and so forth. Uh, other information that's really cool here is that Mendeley allows you to connect with other Mendeley users to, to working groups, and that establishes a network of contacts. And we're not necessarily just creating connections like Facebook or something where you're just connecting with people just because you're connecting with them. You're actually connecting with other people that are working with you or working in your field. So uh, it, it, it's pretty pretty cool to to, to see this this uh, user profile actually uh, grow and see uh, your contact uh, network uh, get established. And I'll show you later that we actually then recommend other people to work with and other papers to read and so forth. So um, that's also very useful. So groups, as I mentioned, once you uh, are ready to start working with the other people within Mendeley, with other people that also use Mendeley, you can create what we have either private groups or public groups. Private groups allow you to share not only the references, but also the actual full text PDFs. So the, that's the main difference. So in public groups, you can create a group where people participate together to create sort of a reference list of papers. So just the references, not the PDFs. And uh, the public ones are subdivided into invite only or open. So if it's a public group and you want to have, say, you want to have a public group with a list of papers that you are um, to present, such as reading material for a classroom. You probably don't want it to be completely open because you want to have control over that list. So you might want to, if you're a professor or a teacher or a PI or something, you may want to only invite your TAs, for example, your teaching assistants, and they can add papers to that list. And then you could publish that list on, on a website through RSS or some other uh, one of the embedded uh, HTML fields that we provide you. So. Uh, but if you wanted to create, say, for example, you like a specific topic, such as, say, um, microscopy. You want to create a, a general topic group called microscopy, and you want any, anyone from any place in the world that uses Mendeley to add references related to microscopy to that list, so that you have like a master list of papers in microscopy, you can do that. So that's the totally open public group. However, um, I'm just going to focus a little more, a little bit more here on the private part because the private groups are, are, are really cool because you can actually work with other people on Mendeley within the within Mendeley desktop, and you can share the PDF, and you can share annotations between each other. So you can work together on a PDF or multiple PDFs and share your notes and your highlights, etc. And there's also we also provide you with a dashboard to actually have a, a, some sort of a, a small a, a conversation going on within your research. Um, there are you can create the groups on. Mendeley desktop or online, so on Mendeley web, we, we provide most of the same features in both of the platforms. And you can search for groups that are already created online so that you're not creating a new one. So I'm pretty sure there's a group for microscopy and you don't want to go and sort of create another one, uh, or may, you may just want to join another one, or in fact, you, if you do want to, you can create a new one. So you can go online and search for them. And as I said, you can see here and within Mendeley desktop, um, you can see either on desktop or web a group here where there's a dashboard and you see this conversation going on and there's comments and people whenever you upload a document it mentions the document was uploaded and so there's, you can see how many people are in the group and etc. So you, there is um, a level of participation with other people when either in the pu private or the public groups. However, in the private groups, as I said, you get to share the PDFs per se. So when, you, when I say share the PDFs, it means that I may have a p paper that you don't have, and if we join, get together and we work in a group, I can share that document within our group, our private group, and you would have access to it. And you would not only have access to read it, but you would have access to highlight on it. And you, what you see here is each person gets their own color when you highlight. Um, generally, you will always see your color as yellow, and you, other people will have different colors. And in this case, you can see here, this is a document that I highlighted with other folks from Mendeley. Uh, just to demonstrate that the, the how this works, you can see each of us gets our own color post-its, each of us gets our own highlight color, and then on the document when you open it, you get on the right-hand side sort of like a short summary of all the notes that was added to that paper. This becomes really useful for things such as journal clubs or, or just research projects where you're, you're actually trying to write a paper together with other people and you want to share your notes and sort of discuss them and keep them in a structured way and stored somewhere. Mendeley provides that for you. So groups are really cool. There's a lot more we could talk about that. Um, so I'm just going to just go keep on going here. Um, another really cool feature that I mentioned to you is discovery. So 
when you're on Mendeley, as I said, the data gets aggregated. All the papers are stored on a, in a massive library that we have. So every time you add a document to your, to your library, that metadata is stored anonymously into, and aggregated into this library that we've created, this repository so it's that's of sorts. So it's basically a giant database of all the research papers that everyone from Mendeley has ever uploaded to Mendeley. And so this becomes searchable, meaning that I can now search across multiple disciplines for a specific paper or a specific term. And this becomes really useful, especially when you're working cross-disciplinary uh, or transdisciplinary projects, where, uh, say, in my case, bioinformatics, I have a, a large component that's biological and a large component that's informatics. So sometimes, if I'm only looking on a biological database, such as PubMed, I might not find the informatics component. And if I'm looking on, on informatics or physics or mathematics database, I wouldn't, I'd be losing out on the biological. So this becomes really useful. It's become one of the largest databases that, that's available online at the moment, and you can, it has with over 1 million, uh, 100 million papers that have been uploaded, uh, creating this massive database. And what the cool thing here is that by aggregating all this information, we also generate statistics and recommendations for our users. So our users can be, um, as, as I add papers to my library, Mendeley at, at certain point will sort of keep it, uh, an, will recommend other papers based on that information. And that's really useful because sometimes I might find a paper in a really small journal or some other, or, or in a journal that I've never looked up or somewhere, uh, or something new that's been popped up into the library, into the database, and that might be useful for my research. So when you do look up for a, a paper on Mendeley, uh, a single paper entry would look like this on the database. So our paper, our research catalog will show, will show you not only the abstract, the author, and some that type of information, but it'll also provide you with re related research, recommend readership statistics. So it'll tell you how many people that use on Mendeley have this, have read this paper, and it'll also mention which field, area of research they're from, which discipline, how, what's their academic status, which country they're from, and also in many cases you'll have a small, um, generally a, a one or two page preview of the paper. So you can actually click here; it'll open the PDF in a, in a sort of like a pop-up window, and you'll you can read just the, the first tidbits of sort of like a, a half section of a page. It'll allow you to sort of get a, see if the paper is actually worth downloading. And if you wanna, if you wanna add it to your library, if it's freely available online, uh, generally we will have a button that says save PDF to your library or save reference to your library. So if the PDF's available, you just click this button and it gets saved to your, to your, to your database to your library automatically. Once you open Mendeley Desktop on your computer, you synchronize and it becomes immediately available for you on your computer. So that's, that's uh, quite useful. If you're on a library uh, at your university and you're on a library um, on your university network, network and your library has access to papers, so such as my university, many universities have um, um, access to full text uh, versions of the paper, Say this button were not free, this paper were not free, and it was only available through, say, some, one, some publisher that my library does have access to. We have actually a field, a little drop down here, uh, button here, that basically tries to attempt to look for this paper through your university's open URL resolver, which is basically, which is super useful because um, instead of me going to open another database and look for the paper and find it and then download it, if the link is immediately available for me within Mendeley, I just click there, I'm one click away from it, I just download it and, I, and, I, and I'm set to go. So we've tried to implement this so it makes it as easy as possible to access the paper um, even when, uh, even only, even if it's only available through your university connection. And as I said, by adding all these papers to your library, connecting with other people, you get a, a full-fledged dashboard on your desktop that allows you to connect with other people. You can actually chat with other people through um, through comments and, and et cetera. We have some of the social network type of features that a lot of people enjoy. And then we uh, re recommend people that, may, that you may know that are based on your research interests and other people that you've connected with. And we also provide you with real-time updated feed of the most read articles in your field of research and also recommendations, so actual papers that we recommend that you might want to read based on previous documents that you've added to your library. So that becomes quite uh, useful uh, in the long run, especially uh, because this is give, give, 
sort of passively being given to you. You're just passively learning about new papers and, and meeting new people, which becomes quite useful in uh, when you're doing research. And finally, I just want to go over, um, because many of you uh, that may be working in engineering may actually be computer scientists or enjoy programming. We have um, a Mendeley Open API, which is basically all the information that I just mentioned to you that's available in that research catalog. You can have access to all that information through our Open API. And if you have a really cool idea of what you could do with that, we use this Open API and you can develop a program like many people are, have been developing and there are many more that are. And you can generate, create new programs and new software and, and applications or you could actually potentially create a new Mendeley desktop, another software project. So uh, th th that means that all the data is completely open and still everyone's data. So we're not necessarily hoarding all of this and keeping it to ourselves. We're just making it organized and making it available back to everyone. So um, there's actually a competition going on right now. It uh, ends towards the end of September. It's called the Binary Battle. And if you use our API and create a really cool tool, you can win over $10,000 and some really cool prizes and be judged by some of the big names in uh, online uh, and publishing in the, from the online and publishing world. Uh, it's a joint uh, uh, pro um, competition by Mendeley and PLOS, so the Public Library of Science. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite entertaining to see a lot of these big projects being set up. And you can, I'll, I can show you um, online after the presentation if you want some of the projects that are, that are being developed and that have already been done. And I, and I can mention to you and show you if you, there is a wrapper that so that if, if you do program, you, you might know what a wrapper is. So it's basically people have created sort of uh, simplified versions or um, program packages to allow you to access this information through our API using either Python or Ruby or R, some different programming languages. So there are a lot of different uh, ways to access this information. So the address is there at the bottom if you want to take a look at that. And finally, to just finish up here, um, it's, it's pretty important to, if you don't want to keep up with whatever we're doing and, and the novelties and new things that we're introducing, keep up with our blog. So it's mendeley.com slash blog. And we also have something called the Feedback Forum, which is, called, which is available at feedback.mendeley.com. And you can go in there and, and suggest new features and add new features. If the feature has been suggested already or, or if you want to report a bug or something, you can vote for it. You get a specific number of votes, and you can vote for it. And then those the things that get most votes generally get some some airtime in a programmer's uh, uh, get some a slot in their in their roadmap, and then generally become uh, a feature within Mendeley. So it's not necessarily only our roadmap and the way we want to make the program. It's also a lot of the feedback from users have let us sort of um, maneuver. Uh, around our roadmap and implement other features that have made us uh, quite uh, implemented a lot of really, really useful features. So if you do have something, suggestions and feedback, just go ahead, go over there. And we also have a contact and support form on the, on the website if you want to contact us there. Um, if you did like this webinar or if you think that more people would enjoy um, watching or listening to this webinar, um, there's a, there's a link here, it's called group webinars, and we you can go to that um, address and sort of request another webinar, and we can try and find a date and the time and see